uh, message titled Daniel chapter 9, Daniel's Prayer Confessing His Sins. Uh, hermano Turo, por favor, guíanos en oración esta mañana. Bendito Juan Padre, gracias te damos por tu presencia en este lugar. Oh Padre amado, te suplicamos, te suplicamos que tu santa misma palabra venga con unción, Padre amado. Que tu palabra venga a respaldar con el poder del Espíritu Santo, Señor. Que el hermano Juan sea un conducto del cual abre nuestra vida, Padre Santo, Señor. Te pedimos que tu Espíritu Santo abra nuestro entendimiento, nuestra sabiduría para poder visualizar, Señor, tu grandeza y tu divinidad, Padre Santo. Creemos en tu palabra, nos afirmamos en tu palabra. Es necesario importante, Señor, que tu palabra sea respaldada con el poder del Espíritu Santo, Señor, Padre del Cielo. El fuego consumidor, el fuego purificador, Padre Santo. Por te pedimos que este mensaje sea edificación de tu iglesia, Señor. Y que el hermano nuestro Juan, Señor, sea un, sea un conducto en el cual nos abre directamente, Señor, en nuestra vida para mejorarla cada día de tu presencia. Invitamos, Señor Padre Santo, que tú nos acudas, que tú nos muevas, Padre Santo, para poder asimilar tus palabras. Porque tú te darás los alimentos en nuestra alma. Necesitamos de tu palabra, Padre Santo, que el Padre Amado, que es la que rompe la manera de obstáculos para creer en ti, Padre Santo, porque tú eres un Dios verdadero, un Dios que rige los destinos de este mundo, el cual en esta hermosa mañana, Señor, te lo presenta en gran manera con tu grandeza y dignidad. Por eso te pedimos que tu mensaje, Señor, sea tu función, 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 que tu mensaje, Señor, sea
Mi esperanza es que cause que, 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 que nos humillamos ante Dios en oración. Confesamos todo lo que hacemos al Señor. Este, seguir, este, este, preguntar y, pre, y pedir perdón al Señor. Recibir el perdón del Señor y aceptar a Jesucristo como su, su, nuestro Señor Salvador suficiente y rey de nuestras vidas y levantar nuestra cruz y seguir al Señor a los que son creyentes al Señor que, que han caído mi esperanza es que tú te arrepientes también y, 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 y pedir al Señor que te restaure que haga, que haga un trabajo de restauración en tu vida que restaure tus, tus relaciones quebradas tu, con, tus relaciones quebradas con tu familia y tus amigos con tu mamá, tu papá, tu hijo, tu hija amén mi esperanza es que Dios restaure a ti para atrás a Él eso es exactamente lo que Daniel estaba haciendo, pidiéndole al, al Señor en su oración que restaure a Israel en, en Daniel número 9. <coughs> Él realizó en versículo 1, por medio de los libros de la profeta Jeremías, que los 70 años de exilio de Babilón y los 70 años de desolación de Jerusalén han venido, han terminado. <coughs> su presentimiento era... Este, según las este, la, la profecías de Jeremías y la realidad que Babilón ya ha caído, que el tiempo de, de los judíos, que el tiempo de los judíos, que el tiempo de ellos ya era tiempo para regresar para atrás a Jerusalén. Después de que Daniel entendió la significancia profética de Jeremías, en Daniel capítulo 9, versículo 3 y 11, dice que él comenzó a confesar al Señor todos los pecados de Israel. Let us read the scriptures in Daniel chapter 9, verse 3 through 11. As we go along. Amen. Let us read the scriptures in chapter 9, verse 3 through 11. As I read the word to you. And it says, And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenants and mercy to them that love him. <coughs> Praise the Lord. And to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned. Look what it says. We have sinned. He's confessing. I have sinned, Lord. I have sinned, Lord. It says that we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly. And have rebelled even by departing from the precepts of from and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces. As it is this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all of Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries with, whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face to our kings and to our princess and to our fathers because we have sinned against thee. Ahora estoy en versículo 9, verse 9. To the Lord our God belongeth mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against Him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in His laws, which have set before us by His servants the prophets. Verse 11. Ye all Israel has transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. There's the consequences. For Daniel is, is letting him know. We know. He knows the reason why these things are happening to them. It says, Therefore the curse is poured upon us. And the oath that it is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Amen. 
Because we have sinned against him. As we can see from the scriptures, Daniel had confessed many of the sins the people of Israel had committed against God. This was the first thing Daniel did in his earnest prayer to God before he asked for the restoration of the people of Israel. We will cover the restoration part of Daniel's long prayer the next time we meet. First, there must be conviction and repentance. Primero, tiene que haber convicción y arrepentimiento. Just like Daniel confessed the sins of Israel to God, a follower of Jesus Christ also must do the same. Igual como Daniel ha confesado los pecados de Israel, al Dios de Israel, un seguidor de Jesucristo tiene que ser lo mismo también. Cuando hemos cometido errores, cuando el Espíritu Santo los ha convictado el corazón. Amen. Whether you are a backslider like the Israelites have been, or the Holy Spirit got you to realize that what you just said or did is a sin against God, you must confess it earnestly to God in prayer before you ask for restoration. But first, there must be a true and sincere conviction in your heart that you have sinned against God. Pero primero tiene que haber un verdadero y sincero convicción en el corazón que tú has pecado ante el Señor. You must realize the need to confess it to God and seek His forgiveness before receiving restoration from God. Tienes que realizar que, que tienes, la, tienes que tener que la necesidad de confesarlo al Señor y pedir su perdón antes de, de pedir restauración de Dios. Conviction comes through the work of the Holy Spirit. When you hear the Word of God preached or when you read and study the God's Word yourself. That's why I always say, open your Bibles daily, read the Word of God, yes. and let the Holy Spirit work in you. Yes, yes. The Holy Spirit is the one through the Word of God that brings conviction in the heart. Amen. Amen. When the Holy Spirit convicts your heart of the sin you committed, and you're sincere about it, you can't help but to repent of the sin you committed. Because the Holy Spirit just keeps on convicting you, keeps on working on you, and you can't help but to repent of those sins. I know I do. You can't help but to feel the guilt and the shame and the sorrow for what you've done against God. You can't help but to mourn and weep and to be afflicted by it. If there ain't no affliction in your heart, for the sin you committed against God, then you don't have true conviction in your heart. It must, it must hurt your spirit. It must grieve your spirit. Amen? You must feel the heaviness of it. This is called true repentance, which is further described in the book of James and the book of Acts. Let us read the book of James chapter 4 verse 9. describes repentance this way. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. So that's where I got my, my comments, my notes from. Amen? In the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19, repentance is described this way. Hechos capítulo 3, verse 9, arrepentimiento es describido en esta manera. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Okay? Converted. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Like I said before, when you truly repent of the sins you committed, you are afflicted by it, you feel the heaviness of it, and you are mournful about it. You are feeling so much guilt and shame and sorrow for what you did against God that you can't help but to mourn and weep about it. You can't help but to turn from your wicked ways, not do it again, and turn to God. According to the scriptures, this is what true conviction and repentance looks like. According to the scriptures, this is the state that each believer's heart must be, must be in, truly convicted and truly repentant, before confessing their sins to God in prayer. 
Tiene que haber verdadero convicción y arrepentimiento a, este, cuando, cuando uno viene en oración al Señor para pedir perdón. Tiene que extender uno a la, a la aflicción este, de ese pecado, de esa convicción. La convicción sí duele. La convicción sí, sí aflicta. Aflicta tu espíritu. Si no tienes una verdadera aflicción del pecado que tú has hecho ante Dios, no es una convicción verdadera. Help us, Lord. Help us, oh Lord. Now, once a believer feels this conviction and has repented, he or she must turn to God, which is a sign of true repentance, and seek Him earnestly in prayer before the confession of sins is done. Ahora que el, el creador ya, ya, ya siente la convicción y ha, se ha arrepentido, él o ella tiene que, este, tiene que, este, tiene que uh, voltear al Señor. ¿Verdad? Ese es, ese es un, este, un arrepentimiento verdadero. Uno mira al Señor. ¿Verdad? We turn to God, with a, which is a sign of true repentance, y perseguirlo honestamente en oración, antes de confesar lo que has hecho. ¿Verdad? But how do we go about doing this? Well, we must do exactly what Daniel did in, in 9, chapter 3. Turning to God and seeking God in prayer. Tenemos que hacer, ¿cómo podemos hacer eso? ¿Verdad? Tenemos que hacer exactamente lo que Daniel hizo en capítulo 9, versículo 3. Es voltear al Señor. Es seguir al Señor en oración. Verse 3 says that Daniel had, had set his face unto the Lord God to seek him by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. In other words, we must, as Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 3, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. We must, as James 6 says in verse Chapter 4, verse 7, submit yourselves therefore to God, but in order for it to be true subjection unto God, we must resist the devil and he will flee from you. We must, as James says in verse 4 through 8, chapter 4, verse 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. But in order for God to draw near to us as we draw near to him, we must, we As James puts it, cleanse our hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. We must also, as James says in chapter 4, verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Amen, amen. Tenemos que hacer lo que Mateo 6, 33 dice. Tenemos que hacer lo que este Santiago capítulo 4 indica. Amen. Once we set our faces unto God or turn to God in the manner that Jesus and James described in the scriptures I just mentioned, then we can seek Him through continual prayer and supplications with fasting and mourning, like Daniel chapter 9 verse 3 says, and the confessing of sins to God. Then and only then will God lift us up with forgiveness and restoration. So like I said before, brothers, there has to be true conviction. There has to be true repentance. And there has to be sincere confession of the sins. There has to be true confession of the sins. And true seeking of the Lord. Amen? But like I said before, in order to, for forgiveness and for rest restoration to happen, we must have true conviction in the heart. We must be truly repented. We must earnestly and humbly turn to God. Not turn away from God. We turn away from God and we're going back to our normal old ways. We must turn to God and seek Him in prayer. And we must be sincere in our confession of our sins to God when we pray to Him. How sincere should we be to God about our sins? Is the question that Daniel answers in verse, verses 4 through 11. Tenemos que ser sinceros cuando confesamos nuestros pecados al Señor. 
Tenemos que ser sinceros y verdaderos cuando pedimos perdón al Señor. ¿Qué, ¿Qué tan sinceros tenemos que hacer con Dios de nuestros pecados? Es la respuesta que Daniel contesta en versículos 4 a 11 en, en el libro de Daniel capítulo 9. Confession of sins to God must really be sincere. And I'm talking about really, really, really sincere. Tiene que ser verdaderamente sincero. Because if you go back and do the same thing again, you were not sincere about it. Porque si, este, si vuelves a hacer los mismos pecados otra vez cometiéndolo, no de veras fu fuiste sincero al Señor cuando lo confesaste. Sí. You truly were not convicted. You truly had not repented. Because repentance means turn from it, don't do it again, and turn to God and seek His forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Don't do it again. Stop. And turn to God for forgiveness. We must be sincere about it. All of us must be sincere about it. I need to be sincere about it. Each and every one of you must be sincere about it. Amen? Amen. Our confession of sins to God must really be sincere according to Daniel chapter 9. And boy, was he sincere about it as he prayed to the Lord his God and made his confession of many sins the people of Israel had committed against God. If you read the scriptures, he was really, really sincere. Si le hizo los versículos 4 a 11, él era verdadero sincero. Se ha confesado no malos de él, pero todos los pecados de Israel. He was sincere. He was so sincere about his confessions to God because he knew God has kept his end of the bargain. God has been faithful. But Israel had not been faithful. God is faithful to us, but maybe we have not been faithful on our part. We must be faithful, be faithful to God too. Daniel proclaims in verse 4 that God has kept the covenant and mercy to those who love him and keep his commandments. Right? God has been faithful in his promises. But on the other hand, the people of Israel for years have not kept their end of the bargain. They have been unfaithful to God. Aquí Israel no era, no, no eran fieles al Señor. El Dios sí era fiel a, a su gente. In verses 5 through 8, Daniel confesses the shamefulness of many sins the people of Israel had committed against God. Daniel is basically confessing to God, Yes, Lord, we have committed all these sins against you, and I am ashamed of it. All the people of Israel should be ashamed of it. In fact, our faces should reflect the shamefulness of the sins we committed against you. Daniel further says in verse 7 through 8 that righteousness belongs to God, and that confusion belongs to the faces of all the people of Israel. In other words, shame belongs to all the people of Judah, Jerusalem, and all of Israel who live near and far away in other countries that God has driven them to. For example, their exile in Babylon because of their unfaithfulness to God. It should be shame. It should be, and I was shame on you. There should be shame on your faces. You should show true from the heart. Because that has to come from the heart. Your shame has to come from the heart. Your, your grievance of your sins you committed against God has to come from the heart. True conviction. And it shows when, you, when you're crying. When you're crying out to God, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. There's, there has to be shame in the, in the face. There must be shame which comes and is rooted in the heart, right? Because God looks in the heart. So there must be shame. There, you must be ashamed of it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Daniel further confesses that shame also belongs to all the kings and rulers and ancestors because they too have sinned against God. All the people of Israel have sinned against God. All the people should be ashamed of it in their hearts and their faces, their actions and their prayers, their supplications and their confessions of sins against God should reflect an afflicted and mournful and heavy and sincere shame for what they've done against God. Again, if there is none of this in your conviction and repentance, then you have not truly 
So you don't have true conviction and true, and you have not truly repented. Because if you do it again, it shows that you truly did not have true conviction and true repentance. Okay? You must be sincere in seeking God's forgiveness. There must be true conviction and repentance. Amen? They should reflect a, a sincere, a deep guilt and sorrow for the disobedience of God's commandments. They should reflect a, a person who is truly convicted in the heart and who has truly repented of their rebellion against God. They all should feel the shame level of the shame Daniel expressed in his prayer of confession to God. Todos nosotros, los que hemos pecado al Señor, tenemos que, ten, tam, tenemos que estar avergonzados en nuestras caras, en nuestro corazón, lo, igualmente como Daniel expresó y confesó los pecados al Señor. El Señor Now as for us, we should also feel and reflect and express the same level of deep conviction and repentance for the sins we committed when we confess them to God in prayer. Furthermore, we should also, as Daniel did in verses 9 through 11, confess that even though God has warned us of our wrongs through his word, through his still small voice, through the preacher, or through some other, or, or, or through other people that God himself has sent. Okay? We still do not listen to his warnings and continue to rebel against God. You know, a lot of times God does send people in our lives to warn us, to tell us that we have done wrong. Sometimes we, sometimes we don't want to hear from family and we tend to ignore them, but sometimes outside forces, a friend or someone else, a, bro, a fellow brother or sister in Christ may bring, bring to attention of something you've done wrong. God is using them. God is using them to try, to try and get to, get to you of what you've done wrong and what you need to repent. Don't get offended. It's going to hurt. It's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. I know it, I know it hits me when, when, you know, sometimes, you know, my mom, my mom, can still do, my mom can still give me advice. She's not a godly woman, but my mom still has wisdom in other areas where I don't have wisdom. Right? God may use my mom, who's not a believer, To bring conviction in my heart. I know it's happened to me. So I speak from experience. I speak from experience. God uses other people as well. Amen. Dios usa otra gente. Que no son creyentes para traer convicción a nuestros corazones. Yo hablo por experiencia. Mi mamá que no es, este, no es creyente del Señor. Ella me ha, tra ella me ha este, corregido a mí. Y trajo... El, el, este, traigo convicción en mi corazón que yo tengo que cambiar en eso en mi vida. ¿Verdad? Yo hablo por experiencia. Amen. A veces convicción viene por afuera de, de los hermanos y hermanas. Porque a veces, nuestra, si oyemos eso de nuestra propia familia, no queremos hacer caso. A veces lo tomamos por lado mal, ¿verdad? Pero tiene que ver convicción verdadera y arrepentimiento verdadero y sincero. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Daniel acknowledged in his prayer to God that because of Israel's unfaithfulness, they had suffered the curses and the judgments written in the law of Moses. Daniel también se, este, este, se, este reconoció en, en su oración a Dios, que por su infidelidad, por la infidelidad de, de Israel hacia Dios, que ellos sufrieron los, los, este, los, los castigos que estaban escritos en la ley de Moisés. Daniel further acknowledged in his confession to God, according to Daniel chapter 9, verse 12 through 14, that God was justified in the judgment he brought upon Israel because they have sinned severely against God. Daniel también se dio cuenta en su confesión a Dios 
según Daniel capítulo 9, versículo 12 y 14, que Dios fue justificado de, de es el, ju, el, el, ju, el juicio que Él trajo sobre su gente de Israel, porque ellos pecaron severamente contra Dios. Let us read what it says. And he had confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing up, bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven hath not been done, as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written aloud, Moses, all this evil is come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Amen. In other words, despite our, uh, everything that uh, the consequences that we've been suffering, we have not turned. We have not turned from our wicked ways, and we have not turned to God. You know, oftentimes I don't know if you realize, but some children don't sometimes don't learn their lessons. You know, we punish our kids, don't we? We 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 take away their phones. We spank them. We discipline them. Sometimes they don't listen. They don't learn from their mistakes. It's basically what Jerusalem, what, 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 what was going on here. These were children of Israel that had not learned their lesson. After all these judgments of God have got, has come upon them. Es casi igual como un niño cuando un padre castiga a su hijo o hija. Los castiga muy severamente pero no aprenden de sus, de sus errores. Es verdad, ¿verdad? A veces los hijos no aprenden por sus errores, ¿verdad? Tienen que a veces aprender a lo, a lo difícil. Sometimes, sometimes they may not learn from your discipline, but they'll have to learn the hard way. Amen. I know I had to learn the hard way. Plenty of times I had to learn the hard way as a kid. <laughs> right? I had to learn the hard way. All of us had. Once or twice in our lifetime. Amen. And verse 14 says, Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, for we obey not his voice. Because we don't listen to what God is trying to tell us here in his word of God. Because when we open up the scriptures, we're not listening to the Spirit is speaking to us as he's revealing to us what his word is speaking to us that we can apply in our lives. A lot of times when we pray, a lot of times we just need to be quiet. Have you heard us be still and know that I am God? A lot of times we have to do that in our prayers. Sometimes we're so busy in, pl in planning our prayers, uh, uh, what we, we need to pray for, that we sometimes, sometimes we, we ignore what God is like already speaking to us, trying to speak to us. Right? A lot of times we just need to be still and know that He is God. We need to be still, meditate on God, and hear His voice. Hay a veces que, que aquí dice que no, que no, ellos no obedecieron la voz del Señor. A veces el Señor habla con nosotros por medio de su palabra. Pero a veces el Señor también habla este, en, en nuestras oraciones. Pero a veces estamos muy, este, muy, este, muy involucrados y planeando este, todas nuestras oraciones de la, del día que a veces este, 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 no podemos oír la voz de Dios, lo que Él anda tratando de decirnos. Estamos muy busy, este, ¿cómo se dice busy en español? Ocupados. Ocupados, planeando todas las oraciones de la gente que a veces no este, estamos oyendo la, la, la palabra del Señor. Sometimes tenemos que hacer lo que la palabra de Dios dice, que estar quietos y saber que Él es Dios. Sometimes we have to be still and know that He is God. Tenemos que quedar callados a veces y o escuchar lo que Dios está hablando en nuestras vidas. Lo que Dios está trayendo, trata de decir a nosotros. Sometimes we just need to stay quiet and know that He is God. Right? Because of their disobedience and rebellion, God judged them and giving them over to their enemies, more specifically their 70-year exile into Babylon. The people of Israel had suffered the consequences for committing sins against God. 
God has justified, was justified in his judgment of Israel, and he is certainly justified in his judgment upon any of us who continue to sin and have not repented. He's certainly justified, brothers and sisters. But there is something else that Daniel said in, in chapter 9, verse 9, that would give people of Israel hope for future restoration. This hope is for the unbeliever and the believer who has backslidden as well. He said that even though we rebelled against God, even though we are sinners, even though we have backslidden, even though we have, have unintentionally sinned against God without realizing it or in the heat of the moment, God is still merciful and a forgiving God. Amen? God can still save you give you eternal life and restore you back to himself. Para hay una esperanza aquí en Daniel capítulo 9 versículo 9 para la gente de Israel para un futuro restauración. Esta esperanza también es para el, el que no es creyente y para también el que es creyente que ha, que ha fallecido, que ha fallado al Señor. Él dijo que, que aunque han este, revelado contra Dios, no importa este, este, no, este, even though they have sinned against God, aunque amos, aunque somos pecadores. Aunque, seamos, aunque hemos caído de la gracia del Señor, aunque hemos fallado al Señor, aunque hemos cometido este, pecados que a veces no eran intencionalmente, a veces era en el momento de emoción o, o coraje, que a veces hacemos y decimos cosas que no de veras queríamos decir, la gracia del Señor los salva, los perdona y los restaura para atrás a Él. Amen, amen. amen. The Apostle John gives us further hope and restoration according to 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. El apóstol Juan también nos da este, más esperanza en restauración según este primer Juan capítulo 1 versículo 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we have true conviction in our hearts have repented of our sins and have turned and I mean and I mean turned to God and sought him earnestly and have confessed our sins sincerely to God in prayer, then God will certainly forgive us and restore us back to Himself. I don't know how more boldly or how more truthful I can put it. There has to be true conviction. There has to be true repentance. There has to be sincere confession of our sins to God. And it has to be sincere and humble seeking of God and turning to God Turning away, stopping what, we're, what we did be, uh, before, stopping what we have repented of, and turning to God and sincerely seeking Him. I have seen people say to me that, that they have repented, and then I've seen them later do the same thing again. That has to be true conviction, true repentance, and true seeking of the Lord. Amen. None of us are perfect, but we need to seek God to help us. Nada nosotros somos perfectos. Tenemos fallas. We have imperfections. We have faults. We have errors. But we need to try to seek God to help us. We have to turn away. When we realize we have sinned against God, we need to have that conviction and that true repentance and seek God to forgive us. Confess our sins to God. And he is faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This was certainly in Daniel's mind throughout his prayer. As he heard the end of his confession to God. As he neared the end of his confession to God. He knew that God was merciful and forgiving if only, 
And it says, if, a big if, if only the people who <laughs> repent, turn to God, seek God, and confess their sins to God through prayer. That's a big if, isn't it? That is if we're truly repentant. That is if we turn to God. That is if we truly seek God. That is if we truly are sincere and are confessing of sins through prayer. That is a huge big if to me. Eso sí, de veras, tenemos convicción. Eso sí, de veras, tenemos este arrepentimiento verdadero. Eso sí, verdadero, somos sinceros de nuestra confes este convencer los pecados al Señor. ¿Verdad? Ese es, un, ese es un gran sí, ¿verdad? Ojalá que sí tenemos ese gran sí. I hope we do have that big if. Right? That we do confess our sins. That we are sincere. That we are truly convicted. That we are truly repentant. And seeking of the Lord. He knew that God would forgive them and restore them back to himself. This was certainly Daniel's sentiment in 9, in chapter 9, verse 15 through 19, as he asked God for mercy, forgiveness, and restoration for all the people of Israel. I will cover this the next time we meet. Yo voy a cubrir esto. Cuando se trata, este, cuando, este, versículos 15 y 19, lo voy a cubrir el próximo, la próxima vez que, que, que regresamos a la iglesia. Cuando él pide por la misericordia, por el, por el perdón y restauración de Israel, de toda la gente de Israel. Eso lo va a cubrir el próximo domingo. I guess my closing statements, points for this message should be that if we desire forgiveness and restoration from God, that we should truly repent, turn to God, earnestly seek God, and confess our shameful sins to God through prayer. When we do this, God is faithful and just to forgive us to take away our shame and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and replace it with His forgiveness and restoration. Amen. Yo creo que los puntos que te, eh, terminados que tengo que hacer en este mensaje es que si de veras deseamos la, el perdón y restauración del Señor, tenemos que verdaderamente y sinceramente arrepentir, voltear al Señor, seguir al Señor, confesar Nuestros pecados avergonzosos al Señor por medio de oración. Cuando hacemos eso, Dios es fiel de, de, de quitar esa, de esa, esa vergüenza de nuestros pecados y de lavarnos de todos pecados. Y reemplazarlo con su perdón y su restauración. Eres cristiano, Señor. I would like to open uh, the altar of prayer this morning. If there's any unforgiven sins, if God has spoken to your heart this morning, if there's any sins that you've done against God, you may not know if you've sinned against God too, unintentionally. You don't know if you have said anything that has brought hurt to God. Whatever it is, come to the altar this morning and pray to God and seek Him earnestly. If God has convicted your heart, si Dios ha convictado, ha traído convicción en tu corazón, arrepiéntate, repent, and seek His forgiveness earnestly. Let us pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray this morning, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in your presence, O oh Lord, Father. Father, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name this morning, for all of us, Lord Father, that, that have, uh, uh, that have uh, sinned against you, Lord Father, for any unintentional, uh, any unintentional sins we've done against you, Lord Father, in the heat of the moment, or, or things that you've brought in our hearts, that you convicted in our hearts, Lord Father, that we've done against you, Lord Father. We ask, Lord, Father, we sincerely, oh Lord, hallelujah, we, are, we feel the shamefulness, Lord, in our hearts, Lord Father, to, we repent, Lord Father, we turn away from our wicked ways, we turn away from that sin, from that intentional sin, Lord Father, we turn away, Lord Father, we put a stop to it right now, Lord, and we come and turn to you, oh Lord, for, for forgiveness, Father, we confess our sins, we confess that we have done something against you, that we have sinned against you, that we have, that we have, 
that, that we have hurt someone else, Father, that we have hurt, uh, that we have said things we shouldn't have said, Lord, that we have uh, done unintentional things in the heat of the moment, or Father, forgive us, oh Lord, Father, we are confessing it before you, Lord, Father, we are sincere in our hearts, oh Lord, we are sincere in our, in our, in our minds, oh Lord, we ask, Lord, do you forgive us, oh Lord, do you forgive us of our trespasses, do you forgive us of our iniquities, that we forgive us of our sins, of our faults, of our errors, Lord, Father, help us, give us strength, oh Lord, do not do it again, Father, Father, pray in Jesus' name, hallelujah, give us the strength, oh Lord, to, to rebuke the devil, hallelujah, so he may flee from us, hallelujah, Father, pray that you help us, and you draw near to you, as we draw near to you right now in prayer, Lord, in the seeking of you, sincerely, oh Lord, Father, Father, we come to you in shamefulness, Lord, and humbleness, Lord, before you, because we need your help, we need your strength, oh Lord, to, to resist temptation that comes our way, to be able to go through trials, to be able to, to be able to resist the devil, hallelujah, to be able to resist temptation, hallelujah, to be able to prevent from us uh, hurting you, from grieving your spirit, Lord. Father, I pray, hallelujah, that you the strength that we need, oh Lord. Father, we are a church for Father, prayer. Father, we pray, hallelujah, and we, we need to repent, hallelujah, of all the things that we've said and done in our lives. We need to repent, Lord, of people we have hurt, hallelujah, of church members that we have hurt, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we need to repent, hallelujah, of anyone, of, of hurting our parents, Lord, of hurting our children, oh Lord, hallelujah, of, of hurting our brothers and sisters in Christ, of hurting our, our, our moms and dads, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Father, forgive us, oh Lord. Father, help us, oh Lord, be more united, Lord, to be a united family of God, hallelujah, to be united with our, uh, with our families, Lord, at home, with our friends, Lord, Father. Father, end, Father, our broken relationships. Put them back together again, oh Lord. Father, restore our relationship back to you, oh Lord. Only you through the Holy Spirit can happen, Lord. Father, we pray, hallelujah, that you daily uh, help us, that you daily work in our hearts and in our lives and in our families, that you continue to bless us, that you help continue to help us, oh Lord, hallelujah. We thank you, oh Lord, in Jesus' name, Father. Thank you, oh Lord, for this message. Thank you, oh Lord, for your truth, Father. Thank you, oh Lord. Lord, hallelujah, for today, for allowing us to be here, O Lord, for Brother Al, Lord, for allowing us to be here, for giving us the strength to be here, O Lord. Father, we thank you for Brother Arthur, O Lord, for, sis for Sister Aaron, Lord, for everyone that is here, O Lord. We are grateful for you. We give you honor and you glory, Lord. You are justified, O Lord. You are righteous, O Lord. You are... You are mighty, O oh Lord. You are sovereign, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are certainly justified, O oh Lord, to, pu to, to punish us, Lord, oh Father, if we don't repent of our sins and continue to sin against you, O oh Lord, Father. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your forgiveness. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the conviction you put upon our hearts. Lord Father, we thank you for the restoration of our minds, for the transformation of our minds, and for the transformation of our hearts, Lord. Father, I pray that we ask that you change our attitudes, that you change our minds, that you change our hearts, hallelujah, to the way you want us to be, to the way you want us to speak, to the way you want us to, to act, the way that you want us to, 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 to get a good image of you, Lord Christ. Hallelujah. Father, help us be the, the, the example, the Christ-like example that you want us to be, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Father, that they see Christ in us, Lord Father. We are not perfect, Lord Father, but we ask that you help us uh, show that we can persevere. Hallelujah. That, Father, I pray that you, that you can see others, that you help others see, Lord Father, that we are not perfect, that we're trying to live a godly life, that we're trying to live a sanctified life, that we actually are true in our convict, that we actually are true in our confessing of sins, that we're actually true in not doing them again, hallelujah. Father, help us, Lord. Give us strength, Lord Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord Father, we thank you and we ask of you, Lord Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus.